In today's video, I want to talk about sensitivity analysis in engineering projects. A sensitivity analysis explores the relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. We typically put the independent variable, when we're going to plot it graphically, on the horizontal or x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. And it's important to understand that sensitivity analysis is a tool for exploring variability. So when we build a mathematical model, we often make a lot of choices about the parameters that go into the model. For example, we might want to explore the present worth of a $1 million promise to pay in 10 years. And we want to know how much is that $1 million payment in 10 years worth today. One of the important parameters that we're going to need to know is the discount rate. We know that P, the present value of a future payment, over the discount rate, which I've expressed as I, times the number uh, raised to the power of the number of years, in this case 10, controls the relationship between F and P. So if we were going to explore the sensitivity of P to the $1 million F as a function of this independent variable I, we would draw I along the horizontal axis, P along the vertical axis. If I, the discount rate, were 0%, then students of engineering finance understand that the future value is the same as the present value, which would be $1 million. But as I increases, the present value of this future payment in 10 years decreases in accordance with this function. So the function is the mathematical model and the sensitivity analysis is merely the functional relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. Terrific. This is a classic two-dimensional relationship or a two-dimensional sensitivity analysis. We can also do three dimensions. Suppose, for example, we had two independent variables. There was one independent variable here and there was another independent variable here. In this case, it wouldn't be the same as um, just the discount rate. We could certainly keep that independent variable, but perhaps also the future amount is uncertain. Now, the range of independent variables on the discount right, rate might be something between zero and 10%, but perhaps the future payment uh, ranges somewhere between 1 million and 2 million. If the discount rate is zero and the future payment is 2 million, we'd be up here. If the discount rate is zero and the future payment is only 1 million, we'd be down here. To explore the dependent variable, we have to establish what in topography are called contour lines. These are going to be lines in the middle that represent constant present value. Remember, P is still the dependent variable. F remains a variable, 1 plus I to the 10. So we're exploring the relationship between P, F, and I. We would select F and I such that all of the answers along a single contour line remain the same. What would that look like? At 0%, we know that um, F equals 1 million would result in P 1 million, and F equals 2 million would result in two. Are there any other answers? Are there any other combinations that would result in a present value of 2 million or 1 million? Well, yes. Suppose that I, the discount rate, were 5%. We know that F would have to be more than 1 million because once it's discounted and we want P to be 1 million, F has got to be more than 1 million. And so we could see a relationship. All of the lines of $1 million P will look something like this. 
all of the lines, all of the combinations of solutions of F and I that would yield 2 million would look something like this. We could um, imagine other contour lines. Oh, something, I'm just making these up now. I don't know exactly where they go, but this might be P equals 0 0.5 million. Now you can see in this three-dimensional plot how we have two independent variables and the third variable, the dependent variable, is plotted as if it were a topographic map. Longitude, latitude, elevation. In this case, elevation is P. The longitude and latitude are the two independent variables and these isoquants show all of the combinations of solutions that result in P equals 1 million. There is a third type of sensitivity analysis and this would be a decision map. Suppose we have an independent variable and another independent variable. In this case, P, the present value, F, 1 plus I, still exploring the same equation. But we might have two different cash flow diagrams. The decision map for sensitivity analysis is for comparing two different alternatives. One might be a lottery winner that wins $10 million, but over the course of 10 years. This would be $1 million a year spread out over 10 years. Now the lottery winner also has a choice. They might, for example, accept a lump sum one-time payment, but the lottery doesn't offer you $10 million all at once. Instead, let's say in this case, they offer something like $7 million all at once. What we want to know is what combination of variables would cause us to choose one or the other. And there might be two uncertainties. The first would be I, the discount rate that we've used before. But the second is going to be, what's the inflation rate? Perhaps this other variable, I'm going to call that R for now, is a concern because we don't know what the purchasing power, if we wait for 10 years, we don't really know what the purchasing power would be. We could choose to do this on the basis of a real interest rate, which would be um, the combination of the rate of return that we get on whatever our $7 million investment would be divided by the inflation rate. That is effective divided by one plus inflation. And there could be two ways of looking at the future the discount rate that we ordinarily choose to compute a present value, and the inflation rate that we would say is uh, uncertain, but a risk that future payments might not keep up with the increase, general level of increase in prices. The point isn't to do the math or to have the correct independent variables. The point is that when we do a two-dimensional analysis such as this for uh, a simple model and we get these contour lines, it's interesting. But when we do this different type of decision map, there will typically be a frontier. We'll call this the annual payments and we'll call this the lump sum payment. As the discount rate goes up, we're more likely to choose one of these over the other. A high discount rate would suggest that the annual payments are worth less. And that means high discount rate where we would favor the lump sum. Low discount rate, we're more likely to favor the annual. At a high inflation rate, we want our money all at once. That would be lump sum. But at a low inflation rate, we would favor the annual. There is going to be some line, I don't know the shape, but there's going to be some line between these two alternatives at which we are indifferent. When we use, when we plug in an inflation rate and a discount rate, and we solve for the present value of one cash flow diagram versus the present value of the other cash flow diagram, we can find this indifference where these two are equal. On that line, 
we don't, because they're equal, we are indifferent. There is no decision that would give us a preference for one or the other. But above the line, we want the lump sum. Below the line, we want the annual. I've shown you three different ways of thinking about sensitivity analysis. One merely represents the two-dimensional functional relationship in a mathematical model. The other represents a two-independent variable functional relationship, and the dependent variable is plotted as contour lines. But the third gives us a decision map. You tell me what the value of one independent variable is and what the value of the other independent variable is, and I can, without the contour lines being superimposed, I can choose you or I can uh, recommend to you which of two alternatives is preferable. All three types of sensitivity analyses are relevant for engineering decision-making.